hello guys i welcome you all to my youtube channel and today we are going to be talking about a vehicle dynamics topic about how the load distribution on the front and rear wheels change during acceleration super important topic as far as race car dynamics or suspension design is concerned or in general vehicle dynamics is concerned super important so let's just go ahead and discuss this topic uh, so this is the same uh, diagram which we had in our first uh, lecture over here we define uh, for anyone who is coming new to my channel I'll just define these variables again we have these variables x1 and x2 which basically defines the location of center of gravity with respect to front and rear wheels mg is the vertical is the weight of the car acting from the center of gravity in vertical downward direction L is the wheel base of the car which is basically the distance between front and rear center point of the wheels and 2FZ2 and 2FZ1 being the vertical reaction forces acting on front and rear wheels also the coordinate system over here is defined as anything going from left to right as considered as x direction vertical direction is considered as z direction and perpendicular to the screen that direction is considered as y direction or y axis so now moving on to the next diagram it's pretty much similar to the old diagram what we had except we have few more variables over here one variable being a which is defined as acceleration of the car in x direction and 2fx1 and 2fx2 being the reaction forces acting on the ground by front and rear wheels due to which this acceleration is formed or due to which the vehicle moves in forward x direction so now we want to find how the load distribution or how, what is the change in 2fz1 and 2fz2 when the car is moving right so how do we do that so we'll move forward with the same idea what we did uh, in our previous lecture we are going to balance the forces about x axis z axis and we are going to balance the moments about the y axis so let's let's just go ahead and balance the forces about x axis so if we see in this diagram how many forces are acting in x axis one two and then we have a acceleration not necessarily a force but this can be written in terms of force so let's try writing that equation so this equation can be written up as 2fx1 plus 2fx2 equals mass times acceleration so this is the forces for x direction now for z direction we have how many forces we have three forces acting in z direction 2fz1 2fz2 and the weight of the vehicle downwards so 2fz1 plus 2fz2 equals mg right so x direction z direction now what about moments about y axis if we consider y axis coming out out of this point like out of the center of gravity point we have four forces which can create a moment about the y axis right so how do we write those moments so these can be written up as 2fz 2 times x2 that is the distance between the force and that is the perpendicular distance between the force and the axis similarly this is positive and minus 2fz1 times x1 because this is the force and this is the perpendicular distance of the force from the y-axis and this is acting in counterclockwise direction that's why I have used negative sign over here it's up to you you can use positive sign for counterclockwise direction and negative sign for clockwise direction it's totally up to you and then the two other forces 2fx1 and 2fx2 are acting in counterclockwise direction these can be written up as h 2fx1 plus 2fx2 and the only movement movement happening on this car is the forward x direction there is no other movement it's not uh, 
we don't have a torque or moment acting on this car in like this direction in counterclockwise or clockwise direction so this is equals to zero now from our equation and derivation of our equations in like force equations in x axis we can substitute 2fx1 and 2fx2 for ma in this equation and using the z axis equation we can either use 2fz1 equals mg minus 2fz2 and we can substitute that value of 2fz1 over here which will give us a value of fz2 which can be written up as fz2 equals mg over 2x1 over L plus mg over 2h over L a times g. So equation for fz2 is this. And similarly for fz1 it can be written as mg 2x2 over L plus mg2 oh, I'm sorry this will be negative h over L g now in both the equations the front part this is the static part for both the equations and the latter part is the dynamic part the static part as the name suggests remains the same whether the car is moving or not dynamic part is basically because of the acceleration of the car so we'll just use this equation and try to make sense of how this equation lines up so first of all very first thing i want to say to you is when we are doing all this manipulation of the equation like when we are substituting the value of ma for 2fx1 plus 2fx2 and then we are substituting value of 2fz1 equals to mg minus 2fz2 and substituting it over here and then we are getting some equation for 2fz2 fz2 and fz1 you won't get this equation you would get something like you like essentially this g and this g won't be here what you will get is m a times h over 2 l i have written this g over g in this equation because it makes more intuitive sense and i'll show you why so talking about the static part you have mg which is weight of the vehicle over 2 because essentially if the car if the center of gravity is equally distributed longitudinally like 50 percent weight ratio like 50 percent is x1 equals to x2 like it's located in the center longitudinally of the car then we and this defines basically the ratio so x1 over l x1 is how far is the center of gravity located from the front wheel so if the value of x1 is higher so that means this weight or the center of gravity is somewhere around here closer to the rear wheels that means more weight is over like rear wheels and like the static part essentially for example for a rear wheel drive car where the engine is mounted on the rear wheels essentially so we'll have more weight uh, statically like the weight which doesn't change with the with acceleration so this part defines that thing x1 over l and x2 over l so if value of x2 is higher like that means that center of gravity would be located more clo closer towards the front wheels and that would create some like that means that you would have more static weight on front wheels as compared to rear wheels so this is what this part of the equation defines next part if we are talking about fz2 means mg over like this is the weight of the vehicle and then h over l this basically means that if height of the center of gravity is higher 
the higher the center of gravity of a car is more it will have a tendency to uh, to have change in load on front and rear wheels like load distribution of the car will change more significantly if the center of gravity is higher and it would have a lesser of a tendency uh, for change in load distribution if the wheel base of the car is long so this is what this part of the equation means as far as this part is concerned a over g g we may, we know what it stands for g is 9.8 meters per second basically is the acceleration with which all the bodies are attracted towards earth like if anything is falling down it will fall down with an acceleration of 9.8 meters per second so compared to that what is the acceleration of our car the higher the acceleration of our car uh, as more will be the load distribution and if you try to make sense of this dynamic part the equation of this dynamic part over here consider this thing so for example if you are sitting in a sedan and if you are accelerating if you are accelerating i don't know with some what, 10 meters per second square then you will feel some inertia like we all do right whenever we have traveled in a car we accelerate the car we feel sort of inertia right we are pushed back on our seat so and if we accelerate with like much harder for 20 meter per second square uh, value of acceleration then we'll push back even further on our seat so this is what uh, and like this part of the equation encompasses that phenomenon and now think about for this part think about instead of a sedan you are sitting in a pickup truck and then you are accelerating the pickup truck you will feel more of that inertial force that is pushing you back on your seat. So the higher your truck is or like how high you are sitting in your car or how high the center of gravity of your car is, that would also change the load distribution. Higher the center of gravity, more will be the distribution change in load distribution because of acceleration. I hope this part of the equation makes sense for you for both the equation for front and rear wheels because and this plus sign obviously because if we are accelerating we are pushed back and we know the weight on the rear wheels is added so that's why we have a positive sign over here and vice versa if the weight is added on the rear wheels the same weight has to be subtracted from the front wheels or the load acting on the front wheels this is how i hope this equation makes sense and if you have any questions or concerns please please leave it in the comments below and also one more thing I would like to add in this equation or in this whole derivation is this, this change in load distribution also depends on one more thing. Like right now we are not considering the suspension properties or how the suspension geometry is designed for a particular vehicle. If you think about it, Formula 1 cars, they have independent suspension. So independent suspension with double A arm, if we take an Take it as an example. So the, you have those hard mounting points for top and bottom A arm on front and rear. So if we try to connect, since these A arms are parallel to each other, so this will parallel A arms. Like if we draw an imaginary line through these hard points for front and top and bottom A arms on rear and front wheels, parallel lines are supposed to be meeting at infinity. And whenever these lines intersect for, for top and bottom and top and bottom for front and rear, that point is considered to be as imaginary hinge point, which helps in, which helps in determining how the load uh, distribution changes during acceleration. Essentially in Formula 1 car when the A arms are parallel to each other it's like the load distribution is pretty much negligible. The only load distribution happens because of compliance and various uh, components used in suspension like bushings in the A arms and etc. So with parallel A arms it's like basically pushing like trying to turn a door or open a door while applying force on the hinge. So that's what happens and that's why F1 cars have very significantly less load distribution 
for a given acceleration as compared to our regular day-to-day -day commuter cars. So over here in this equation, we haven't considered that factor. This is just general idea of how load distribution would change under acceleration. I hope you got the concept and in case you have any doubts or questions or comments or concerns, please let me know in the comment section and I'll be happy to answer that. Uh, till then, uh, I'll see you a lot. I'll see you all in the next lecture. Thank you so much.